Yeah. All right, why don't we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go. Go, go, go. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get off the highway. <laughs> Secretary Matias, did you call the roll? Okay. I'm hoping. Um, did he become a doctor? Thing, what if your out? <laughs> Dr. Ross? Dr. Everybody, Ross, everybody, hey. Everybody gets their chances. At, it's, it's Dr. Ross. I guess he became a doctor. Um, <laughs> Miss, Mr. Ross. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way the rest of us got it. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> Miss Schottke? Present. Miss Blade, not here. Dr. Felb. Miss Slade is, She's out. is not here. Okay, She's right. Excuse the. Dr. Felb is present. Okay. Dr. Flores. Here. Or Matias here. Pastor Moody. Present. Dr. Randalls. Present. President Baker. Here. Okay. All I have right. a quorum. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Uh, uh, support. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Well, we are here on a special night, and uh, we're normally not here on the fourth Monday, but here we are. Um, and it looks like a light <laughs> agenda in front of us, just the budget and contracts and stuff. So uh, anyone here for public comment? All right, um, and we have no celebrations. Um, Secretary's report. Wow, um, it's hard to believe that on November um, 8, 2016, we're going to have a general election. Um, there's going to be four open seats on the Grand Rapids School Board with four-year terms starting January 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2020. If you're interested in running for a seat on the school board, please be aware of the following criteria. Must be a U.S. citizen, must be a registered voter, must be a resident of the Grand Rapids Public Schools District's boundaries. And if you want to file, the location is Grand Rapids City Clerk Office, 300 Monroe Avenue, Northwest. And then the filing requirements, um, an affidavit of uh, identity is required petitions containing sufficient signatures or non-refundable filing fee of $100. Uh, petition signature requirements are based on the population of the school district and must be registered electors of the school district. The filing deadline uh, must be made in the office of the city clerk's office by 4 p.m. on Tuesday, July 26, 2016. And that's it. All right, thank you. Superintendent's report. Sorry. Budget over. Sorry, Dr. Baker. <coughs> Dr. Baker and members of the board, I'd like to ask um, Larry Oberst to come forward um, to review the budget and ask your support. Good evening, Dr. Baker. I said good morning. Um, and Superintendent Weatherall Neal, members of the uh, board, <coughs> Good evening, and um, <clears throat> we are here to hopefully get your approval on the on the operating budget, the special revenue budget, the debt retirement fund budget. Uh, we went over this with the, the operating budget with the Finance Committee this morning, got their approval on the revised budget. Both the special revenue and debt retirement fund budgets are unchanged from what was brought to you in um, earlier this month. So. I believe that, let me just summarize what happened between um, the June 6th board meeting and tonight at your direction. We did adjust revenue, reduce it by $3 million to reflect an updated um, enrollment. And I believe it was sent to you a summary of, of fund balance and what those particular adjustments were. Looks like this. I hopefully everyone got a copy mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Sent to them. We have it. And let me just talk for a minute from that particular schedule so it lays out in, in the summary form what went on here. 
If you look at the bottom, then you'll see with the changes to this updated budget, we projected an enrollment for the updated budget of 16,705. And that's made up of our blended count for the year we're in, the 15-16 blended count of 16,680. That was that audited number we just got just prior to the last board meeting. And we've added 25 to that uh, with the belief that we can, in fact, uh, bring more students into the district over what we had this year. Some of that's related to the fact that the Section 25E, which was the rules surrounding transfer students between the fall and spring count date. Uh, we lost 33 students, FTEs, this year because of that. That um, particular section of the, of the School Aid Act was repealed. It's out of there for 1617. So that alone hopefully will, will bring in some additional students that we lost in the current year. Uh, so that 16,705 projected number resulted in a reduction of state aid revenue, about $3 million from what was presented original in the original budget back on, on June 6. And that reduced our fund balance uh, just over 2%. And I think we talked about that on June 6. And the other adjustment to the budget related to uh, later that evening, you as a board approved to increase the uh, health insurance hard cap for all employee groups up to the 1617 statutory limits. You had previously approved a hard cap up to the 1516 limits. And so increasing it to the 1617 limits limits added an additional $415,000 to the expense side. There were no other adjustments in the expense side as I communicated to you in that first board meeting on June 6. We had pretty much settled on what we thought our expenditures were going to be for fiscal year 1617. So all total, the fund balance reduction from the original budget presented to you three weeks ago in tonight's budget for the general fund, uh, reduction of fund balance of 3.4 million approximately, reduces it 2.36%. Now just above that, you can see the summary of fund, what that does a fund balance. I've presented to you the first column where we, where we came out uh, June 30th of last year, what our projection is through Amendment 2 of this year, 8.73%. The original 1617 budget had a fund balance of 8.51%. And the current fund balance, if you approve this budget, will be down to 6.15%. A couple of things I want to say. The fund balance computation was based on the state's early warning criteria, which I think is a key component. And um, uh, secondly, I think back in one of our work sessions or closed sessions, maybe back in March or February, we talked about trying to stay above the 6% fund balance criteria, which we've done here, even with the $3.4 million reduction, just over 6%, 6.15%. So that is the only changes between what was presented to you on June 6 and what we have now. And I'll answer any questions anyone might have at this point. So the, the state's early warning computation, that excludes grant funding as Correct. overall. Correct. It's, it's total fund balance divided by unrestricted funds, yeah, which is, as I said before, it's most advantageous to us, thank God. So, yep. Yeah, so I just want to reiterate that the other thing that was changed is that we did increase from our offer to include Correct. the 1617, so which added yep. $415,000 to. And that, yeah, and that, that sealed the deal with the union negotiations. And, so and, and they're very appreciative we, that, the, that the board mm -hmm. uh, in, increased that. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, so. So that, so that total cost, just to add to Dr. Baker's comment, was about $2.7 million to go from the current hard cap we've had in place for a few years up to what will now be the new hard cap on July 1st. Great. And it will in, in all union groups, uh, we've had several, you'll approve the, their contracts later tonight, that the other couple that aren't, we have letters of agreement. So the impact of that increased hard cap, we'll, we'll see the benefit of that on July 1st. All groups will, yeah. as all employees actually will, So, which is, mm. which is great. So. And we can celebrate that portion. We can celebrate that, that absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Good job. Absolutely. So, any other questions? Um, we, we do need three separate resolutions. Three separate resolutions that need to be passed by by this body tonight. One for the 
general operating fund for 1617, one for the special revenue fund for 1617, and one for the debt retirement fund for 1617. Motion to approve the general operating fund. Support. Okay. So, uh, so we're moving into that. Okay. I do want to. I did want to oh. say before, and I do appreciate that you went back and redid all the stuff to help us have clarity. Mm -hmm. on, so, so I appreciate it. So we had a motion, and uh, Dr. Randall seconded. Ross motion second uh, by Dr. Randall's. Um, any discussion? All right. Call the roll. Okay, Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Shockey. Yes. Ms. Slade is not here. Uh, Dr. Feld. Yes. Dr. Flores. No. Dr. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. President Baker. Yes. Okay. Um, can I get a motion? Motion for approval of the special revenue fund. Support. Any discussion? Uh, I do just have one small question. I noticed um, the proposed budget for 1617, Houseman Field is uh, 123000 I noticed there's an increase from the fiscal year 2015, which was 87000 so just about a thirty-six thousand dollar increase over the past two years. I'm just kind of curious. Eight thousand, seven thousand. Yeah, seven from last year. Yeah, thirty-six from two years ago. And I just yeah, wondering what that might be. Yeah, you know, I, I saw that email from you late, so I apologize. My, my I don't know the my I don't know if Ron, but my I suspect come down. Um, last year and this year. Um, significantly more use the Grand Rapids football club is now using that facility oh, yeah. for for their games mm -hmm. six seven games so operating costs have gone up even though we, we, we charge them at least the costs still show up on on so I'm guessing that's a big chunk of it Rhonda right yeah. primarily is the outside events that we're holding there um, so on the revenue side we're also increasing on that and covering the expenses as we're Actually, this year, 15-16 is, is a very good year at Houseman. <laughs> For the first time. And they're having a very good summer this year. Absolutely, with, we are. So hopefully, 16-17 will continue with that. Okay, yeah, it just got my attention. Yep, I mean, you know, seeing 36000 sure. over two years seemed kind of significant. Mm -hmm. And I was just more curious than anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Rhonda. Any other discussion? Okay, Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Schottke. Yes. Ms. Slade is not here. Dr. Feld. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Dr. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. President Baker. Yes. Okay. Passed. And a motion for the debt retirement fund. So move. Support. Any discussion? Oh. Okay. No discussion. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just waiting for it. Okay, Mr. Ross. Yes. Okay. Ms. Shaki. Yes. Slate is not here. Dr. Feld. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Dr. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. President Baker. Yes. All passed. We're right, moving now to some other um, finance committee items. Uh, purchasing agenda. Can I get a motion to approve? Move for approval of the purchasing agenda. Support. Discussion. Uh, Dr. Baker, let me just clarify because it's it's separately identified. We have purchasing agenda with the blanket orders. Actually, the blanket orders there is a detailed schedule that, but that's that's really covered. It's also part of the purchasing agenda. If you look under Section B, Item 10, so we don't need a separate motion on the 
blanket orders because they are incorporated within the purchasing agenda. Okay, just let me rephrase the motion. Then. So, can I get a motion for the purchasing agenda, including the mm -hmm. blanket orders? Yeah, for the, there you go. Thank you. I need to amend my motion then. Okay, thank you. I'd like to amend my motion to include the blanket orders. We're all parliamentarians tonight, aren't we? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Call the roll. Okay. Mr. Ross. Yes. Schottke. Yes. Ms. Slate is excused. Dr. Feld. Yes. Dr. Flores. No. Rev. Matias, yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. President Baker. Yes. Passed. All right, can I get a motion for the donation? So moved. Support. Discussion? Nope. Donation. Do we know still how it happened? Pardon me? How they did it? Uh, Ken O'Shea yeah, the Elementary? Did we get that? The question the data? Point, how, how we won that the donation. Which one is this? Ken O'Shea. Ken O'Shea, the Media Center redo. I don't have a whole lot of detail. I know that the, the principal had applied for it and they just, and, yeah, they got selected. So now we're going to get a Media Center makeover, including some um, renovations to the, the, the duck. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh cute. Uh, oh. The literacy outdoor literacy center. Oh. Don't make a good a good joke about <laughs> that's right about that's right. meeting <laughs> consultants <laughs> and <laughs> quacking. But anyway. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Schottke? Yes. Ms. Slade is not here. Dr. Felb? Yes. Dr. Flores? Yes. Dr. Matias? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. President Baker? Yes. All passed. Next on our action item is the Museum uh, School High School Parking Lot Memo of agree Agreement. Move for approval of the Memo of agreement. Support. Any discussion on that? Questions? I did want to reiterate what we talked about this morning in terms of the green space use and how it's important we're, um, we're trading a parking lot in a green space and, you know, that um, we need to be aware of that and also that the use of the Briggs Park for use for um, GRPS, if we can have that as a priority, too. There are quite a few things that happen at that park as we go forward, but um, I just wanted to bring that up again as a... Mm -hmm. Sure. I'll just add just mm -hmm. a little bit more to that. What's before you is just simply the purchase of the parking lot. We have been in discussion, and I know there's language that's included in there, of looking at Briggs Park as a potential that when in, in, in the different transactions, it could obviously reduce our overall purchase but in this case, we're buying it at fair market value. We have the potential to sell Briggs at fair market value, but we're, we're still working with the city on that. Mm -hmm. Not a guarantee. Right, right. And yeah, that, that's a big priority for a lot of educational well, we, use. And we it's would. been great. I gotta say, we've yeah. been working with the city. They have been absolutely awesome to work with. Mm -hmm. Every step of the way on 54 Jefferson, they saw the need with the parking. There was an opportunity for us to get it. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it's just been a really good partnership and there. We have potential to continue that with Briggs. So we are, to be clear, we're voting now on purchasing the parking lot. Correct. And we will be asked later to consider perhaps. Potentially, if the city a, a decides that's what they want. Okay. Right. Or if we fundraise adequately that we wouldn't even need to then give up Briggs Park would be another option. I, I'm just throwing that out there this is the discussion I don't know I'm not trying to tie anyone's hands but I, there is the issue of we are fundraising for the public museum uh, from private dollars and mm -hmm. I mr. Correct, Oberst correct. had brought that up correct. Mm -hmm. not that that was yeah but I'm adding 
I don't know, I'm just curious. You add that, um, and I hadn't thought about it prior, but um, which you surmise there would be some preference to hope Briggs as opposed to selling it. I'm just curious. Currently, what you're GRPS uses it significantly. Uh, the city band practices over there. There's some gym gym classes that take place over there. There are soccer. And um, Mr. Klumperens had brought up um, various uses, and Mr. Ba uh, Dr. Baker. So um, it sounds like we would sort of use it quite a bit, and um, and you know, would we lose some of that first priority mm -hmm. if it wasn't our space any longer? Uh, yeah, I'm just you advocating gotcha. that yeah, we yeah. need to when we talk really with make the sure that, that, we, that we would it would be part of our joint use joint agreement. Use we would get priority use over Absolutely. the but we'd have to define what that is. That's and right. and right. so that's one of the reasons why we weren't we didn't move quick exactly. we need to spend more time identifying all the different uses. Right. We need to we need Critical. to have the city Identifying understand what part they the uses. Because if yes. the track, mm -hmm. that was one of the questions the city's posed back. The track, do we really need use of the track? Could they mm -hmm. take the track out? You know, there's a lot of other questions because right. we do use the property and would still need to use the property. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have a little more discussion to have. Sure. Upset barren parents aren't. Okay. But bef I just want for the record that we are not trying to sell Briggs. So I don't want any other buyers to come up and say we're trying to sell property. Mm -hmm. We have not listed the property for sale. Air it out. <laughs> okay. Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Schottke? Yes. Ms. Gladys Hughes, Dr. Felb? Yes. Dr. Flores? Yes. Dr. Matias? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Asked. All right, motion for the Warm, Safe, and Dry project. Can I get a motion? So move. Support. Discussion. All right. Call the roll. Okay, Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Schottke. Yes. State excuse. Dr. Feld. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Dr. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. Is it Baker? Yes. Okay. I don't need to do these one at a time or? No, we can do them together, but um, Mickey is prepared to answer any questions if you'd like yeah. to come forward. No, um, Mickey, come forward. So, yeah, before we uh, call this to vote, could you just let us know? What we're looking at here and absolutely dr baker superintendent neal members of the board in front of you is the resolution to um, approve and ratify contracts for grea gray op greoa grpspa and greoa i think i said them all grayson um, all of the groups have uh, have tas so they have tentatively agreed and the groups before you have ratified their contracts so this is um the evening that we are asking you to approve those contracts so we can put those into place. The summary sheets you have in front of you just summarize the changes that were made to those agreements, um, including the hard cap um, increase and student enrollment incentives for those groups that chose to accept that. This is really nice that mm -hmm. we got this done. You know. It's very nice. <laughs> awesome. Very nice. <laughs> so it's uh, July 1. Yeah. So yeah. it won't mm -hmm. be. Wow. All right. So we are voting for them in one package. Yeah, the resolution includes all of the groups listed on this. So can I get a motion to support the contract ratification? 
Got so moved. Support. Support. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Schottke. Yes. Ms. Slade excused. Dr. Felb. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. From Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. President Baker. Yes. So moved. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appointment to the Grand Rapids Child Discovery Center Board of Directors. Move for approval. That dude's impressive. <laughs> Support. No discussion. All right. Is your hand getting tired? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Schottke. Yes. Slate excused. Dr. Feld. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Dr. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. President Baker. Yes. So moved. All right. Now the consent agenda grouping. Move for approval, the consent agenda. Support. Okay. Mr. Ross. Yes. Ms. Shaki. Yes. Slate excuse, Dr. Felb. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Dr. Matias, yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. President Baker. <coughs> yes. So moved. All right, we have a discussion item of the board retreat reschedule. So we had lots of people have problems come their way a couple of weeks ago. Um, we have um, July 11th on our calendar as a retreat date. Is that correct for the third retreat date? I'm gonna suggest a change, but. Yeah, we have 4.30 yep. set. Yep. Okay. Um, we know that um, at least one of us won't be here for that date. Um, uh, the superintendent and I met with the facilitator from MASB that was here two weeks ago to do the retreat. Um, we had to cancel the meeting late. Um, so we had a long meeting and I think that given the, the things that we want to accomplish, um, I'd like to propose that we consider um, rather than doing um, two more retreat dates, July 11th and then another one to make up for the one that we missed uh, two weeks ago that uh, I'd like to see what you guys think about rather than doing that. We do, um, say, a longer uh, retreat time frame um, in August um, and not do the Ju July 11th date. Uh, but I just want to get what you guys have thought. So we have uh, two remaining agenda items for the uh, board retreat. One would be um, the kind of refresher course, but the um, and Dr. Fall would be interested in this. Um, Mary Kerwin is going to bring in a calendar, a calendaring tool that we can work with and consider. And that calendaring tool. She also there's there's going to be a lot of changes next year for what's expected of um, superintendent evaluation. And actually, beginning next year, all board members will be expected to be trained in doing a superintendent evaluation based on some new expectations. So she is planning to um, use that as a way to um, orient us to the kind of one-on-one -on -one work that we have to do as board members. The second piece that we wanted to include, both of these would be three hour or so sessions, um, would be to talk about um, the racial diversity of the district, including um, the increasing number of international refugee um, students and really how the district 
is responding to these increased groups and how the board should be aware of the increasing um, expectations and needs of our district. So that would be another three hour block. So I'm proposing that we consider a six hour block for a retreat that would be more traditional to the way we've done it in the past. Or I'm open to suggestions about the way you all think that we should do it. Are you suggesting that for the eighth? Well, I am suggesting that we have one six hour retreat rather than two three hour retreats, but I'm open to discussion. The eighth would work for me. Um, you're saying <coughs> August 8th? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. That's what, yeah, that's a, we currently have it um, right. at 4.30. Uh. <clears throat> I'm not available the 8th, August 8th. I'm, I'll be, uh, be out of town still. Are there? Yeah, so will I. Okay, so the 8th is not possible. Um, Is the 22nd of August, that's right before, is that too close to school year starting? <coughs> how, would, how are people on August 22nd? That's our finance committee meeting date. Well, and then we can start that. <laughs> I mean, we can start the, yeah, I mean, it, it only yeah, took I like think 37 we, minutes this morning. I think we could schedule hey, don't around it. We were there like an hour and 40 minutes the, the mm -hmm. time before, so. Okay. We really try. So we can start at 10 and just give you guys a couple hours just no. in case. Oh, yeah, it's fine. We can just roll right through. Okay. So. We're start our, we can have our finance committee at 9 and then meet right after so people don't have to well, show that, up at 8. If is the retreat going to be held here or are we going out to the um, school? GRPS University. We can discuss where. Yeah. Uh, I would probably work with. Um, the staff, but we probably would not have it here. <coughs> GRPS University or somewhere else, get some nice food. So that works for me. I'm available. Does it not work for anyone? August 22nd? And it's going to be a, a pretty packed agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be those two topics. It'll be a full day. Mm. Mr. Ross, are you available? Did you <laughs> make it? Yeah, I can, I can make it. Probably Ms. Slade, I can't really speak for her, but it, it, uh, we have our meeting, so I'm sure she would be around. Or... Okay. Well, let's plan on it. 10 a.m.? Huh? Should we make it a uh, 10 o'clock start after the Finance Committee? Yeah. That would, okay. Sure. Let's do if that. we can, uh, well, I guess we could have finance here still, so we have the cameras. Well, let's and then go over there. Okay. To four, ten to four. Yeah, let's go ahead and tenderly. That would be six hours, right? Well, we would need. We're gonna eat, like working lunch. How about if we pencil in ten to five and try to get done by four? Or we could do. Nine to four. Nine, that would work. I mean, if we do our meeting still here, eight, At eight. and then just go okay. over, and an August finance committee usually isn't that big of a budget issue. All right. We will um, check, we will begin ordering and reserving. Um, thanks. Uh, public comment. Um, we do any have items? One. Yvonne Perry. I yeah. Yeah. Welcome. You have three minutes. Thank you. Three minutes, okay.
Good evening, um, Superintendent Neal and board members. My name is Yvonne Pierre, and I'm here to advocate for my neighborhood, which includes the Grand Rapids Public, um, Public School University campus. Uh, my neighbors and I are concerned that, your dis that the district's decision to remove more than two acres of green space on the north side of, of the school for the purpose of constructing a parking lot has been detrimental to our neighborhood. We believe that your plan has negatively affected the aesthetics of the area and has also created a safety hazard for the residents. First of all, I think we can all agree that green space is quickly disappearing in most urban areas, yet you've removed more than two acres of green space and have replaced the grass with asphalt and the trees with parking lot lights. This was the only green space on the north side of the school building. Uh, I think we can agree that preserving such spaces should be a part of building healthy, vibrant communities. Um, secondly, the plan to have um, vehicles exiting onto Sweet Street is unacceptable. Even a managed, release of, a managed release of cars will result in hundreds of vehicles, possibly hundreds of vehicles, exiting into the residential area if the parking lot is filled to capacity. We believe that hundreds of cars exiting into the neighborhood would create a safety hazard and would change the character of the area. At our last neighborhood meeting, a resident uh, said that it might be more acceptable to have traffic travel up Sweet Street to Ball instead of turning onto the other streets in the area. However, that's really not a feasible plan or a reasonable solution. Sweet Street is part of the residential area and, is, and this proposal does not decrease the concern regarding safety and the volume of vehicles traveling through the residential area. Uh, furthermore, the, exit, the existing exit on the west side of the school is, a juncture, is at a juncture where the line of vision is shortened for drivers who are traveling south on Fuller Avenue because of a rise in the slope of the street. This is a legitimate safety issue. Fuller Avenue is heavily traveled and the traffic flow is swift. Therefore, it will slow the flow of traffic that's using that exit on the west side of the building. Evidently, the, um, um, the traffic safety engineers for the city of Grand Rapids must have been uh, uh, thinking that there would be an exit on onto Sweet Street, I don't know, but I mean, we have uh, we have the potential for having 341 cars uh, trying to get out of that parking lot if it's filled to capacity. So we're really concerned about having this kind of traffic come through the residential area. Um, two of the most disturbing aspects of this whole uh, uh, scenario you know, with the parking lot is the fact that um, the school representatives who are in charge of this plan, uh, according to the assistant city uh, planning director, ignored their advice to notify neighbors of, of this plan for the parking lot. So, you know, I, I just, it it's concerns us so much that uh, we feel that we are, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely a part of the community. Uh, we support millage, millage uh, increases, this sort of thing. Your time um, is up, if you can just. My, my time is up. Your... It's the fastest three minutes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, slowly. Okay, well, let me just say that we met, uh, on the 16th with Mr. Uh, Johnson, uh, Mr. Klumperens, and one of the engineers uh, uh, involved in the construction of the parking lot. And we, at this point, feel that we want you to take another look at the plan to have cars exiting out of the east exit of that parking lot onto Sweet Street. So I would really like to have you take another look at that and, consider, and, take, and see if there is um, 
another, if, if there is an alternative uh, way that you can handle the traffic. Um, the other thing is uh, on our um, June 16th, at our June 16th meeting, uh, we discussed uh, a plan for uh, dealing with the, um, the parking lot. Uh, we have one family's home that actually just faces that parking lot. They're very concerned. They look out every day, and that's what they see. The undulating berms are 12 to 18 inches high, and they don't provide enough screening, uh, you know, to, uh, to really soften the effect of this parking lot. So, so um, I'm sorry, your yeah, time, my time is, yeah. is up. So, Thank you. We so. will check with Mr. Clem and Okay, uh, yes. We, yes. So I... I appreciate uh, your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Superintendent's comments. I would like to uh, thank you, Dr. Baker, and members of the board for uh, really pushing um, for the contracts for the employees. I am uh, just really pleased that we were able to ratify contracts by the 1st of July. That's an important date. And we've discussed this um, during our closed sessions, but it really meant a lot for all of the administrators um, that you guys were able to do that for our employees. And so I just want to say thank you. And I know it was hard work, but I appreciate you sticking with it, um, pushing our thinking. Um, and our employees, I'm sure, appreciates it as well. So thank you for that. All right, um, board member comments. Can I start with Dr. Fall? Yeah, I just, I just want to um, back that up with thanking the negotiating team on uh, both sides of the table um, for their efforts and I'm really, really pleased to see ratification of these contracts. That's great. Yeah, again, kudos. I think uh, we, we certainly are for our employees and we want a good working environment for them as well as our children, so appreciate it. All right. um, Mr. Ross. Uh, I guess I can just obviously second those comments. I also want to um, throw a little shout, a little love out to the Bailey family, uh, Sid Bailey, uh, former principal at a few places, a uh, mentor of mine, and you know, passed uh, about a week and a half ago. Just want to acknowledge that. No comment. Somebody? No comment. No uh, comment. Uh, Ms. Shotkey? Yeah, just delighted that um, We've come to agreement with contracts. I know much work has gone in prior to my appointment, and I'm just proud to be um, a part now of moving forward and um, uh, in a very positive way. So kudos to everyone involved. Um, and happy 4th. And if you're out um, on July 4th, I believe, Hollyhock Parade, right? You can see maybe a few of us out there. So come out and get some good candy and have a great 4th. Great. Yeah, I want to thank uh, the team. I, I think that. Um, you know, it's it's amazing. I can remember nearly all of the times that we've <laughs> we've settled contracts, and it's always been very emotional. Um, and I know that um, whatever disputes there are, it's only because people are trying to balance fewer and fewer dollars and trying to do um, important work, and 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 it's been frustrating um, having to do that. Um, but I'm really happy. I think that the teachers, uh, absolutely, the teachers and the custodians and all of the staff definitely deserve um, the support of us. Um, and I think that I hope, I sincerely hope that they know that we wish, that we all wish that we could do more um, and that we're trying to get there. So with that, um, we're adjourned. Good job, buddy.